Asian culture here is just not as visible in, in the UK, unfortunately. You know, I think if I started making videos where Uncle Roger is saying things like, oh, I'm Asian, I love eating dog, you know, then that would be a problem, right? But to the people who accuse me of uh, that, that character being a racist caricature, I would say, I would urge them to actually listen to the, the things I'm saying and see that everything I say is lifting our people up. It's always hard to explain when, when people ask what it's like growing up in Malaysia. I, I think it's, it's a very no normal childhood. I, I got friends, I got school, and we did karaoke a lot. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, like, it's like growing up in the UK, we just have different habits and different things we do. I realized when I first wanted to do comedy when I was in university in the US, somewhere near, it's a uni Northwestern University, which is near Chicago. A few months afterwards, I started doing stand-up. Uh, just by myself and uh, yeah, I got hooked since and I realized oh, this is what I want to do I would go go to work and then do my data science job and at night I would go do an open mic or do, go go do a gig somewhere travel to a gig come back sleep go to work again the next day So I was working a full-time job and still working uh, still performing four or five nights a week. It got to the point where I was performing so much that I started taking more and more days off from work and that you know People aren't happy about that, so I realized at a certain point something has to give. I think for me it was a very calculated risk. It was more like I was I, I, I didn't just quit the job and then went into comedy. I was like, okay, I make this amount, I make a decent income through comedy. Maybe I can make this work. So it was like, it wasn't zero to 100 straight away. It was more like step by step, let's scale down the data science and scale up the comedy. And I realized I want to I wanna do this comedy thing and really give this a shot, so that's when I quit. Uh, I, I went full-time comedy in September 2019. What did your parents make of it? My parents, I think, you know, you know, you know how Asian parents are. Usually, they they want their kids to have a stable job because they, they came, they didn't come from much, so they want just want their kids to have a stable job, stable income, stable life, that kind of thing. So, my parents were very worried at first, and they were like, "You have a good job as a data scientist. Why are you, why are you giving this up?" They were worried, but I kept telling them, "I'm fine. I'm doing okay. I'll, I'll try to make this work." They also didn't really understood what stand up was because they they were you know grew up in Malaysia their whole lives and stand up is a pretty Western art form right so at first they were like why are you why are you doing this you know, you're not that funny you know <laughs> they they come they would come to my shows my dad told me they my mom and dad they uh, they 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 speak English but they don't really get jokes because you need a certain high level of command of the English language to get things like sarcasm and metaphors and how jokes work right so when they I performed in Malaysia one time and they came to see me perform. They said they didn't really understood what I said because you know when I'm performing, I speak like this. It's a very neutral, neutral-ish English uh, accent and uh, I speak quite fast as well for, an, from, uh, for Asian standards. So my dad told me, uh, I, just, I didn't understand what you were saying, but I just laughed when other people laughed, you know? I moved here mainly for comedy and so I can drink tap water and not die. <laughs> <laughs> awesome here, right? Tap water? I'm Skyping my parents, went back in Malaysia, I'm like, hey, go and try this at home. Just to explain to me the sort of context of when you came up with the, the character, Uncle Roger. Doing character comedy was a goal of mine. I started researching how uh, Asian, middle, older Asian men act and what they wear. I, I sent a text to all my friends asking them to send me a picture of your dad. and. A uh, bright colored polo was uh, by far the most popular choice of outfit for them. Uncle Roger is a reflection of you know, the, the middle aged Asian men, the middle aged Asian, um, we call them uncles back there that I grew up with. They're a bit sassy, they're a bit know it all, uh, but ultimately they're kind people and, and they're very just stuck in their ways, you know? So the first few things I made were short little Instagram clips, Instagram TikTok clips, 40 seconds. Uh, I remember the first one was. Um, how regular people answer the phone versus how Asian parents answer the phone. Hey Evelyn. Hey, I'm actually out right now. Can I call you back when I get home? All right, cool, thanks. Hello? Hi, how are you? When I first uploaded that to TikTok and Instagram, people liked it. So I kept making more of those short little things. Oh, here's how Uncle Roger makes rice. Uh, and I used a rice cooker. And yeah, it went 
it hit hard, you know, getting, I think it got like a million views overnight. And to me, that to me at the time was really, really big. And I thought to myself, okay, it's, I think people like this character. Let's see if I can make something in, in a, let's see if I can use this and make something longer form. And that's when the first uh, Uncle Roger YouTube video came about, which was the BBC food egg fried rice one. Drain it. Drain. What's she doing? What's she doing? Drain the r Oh my God. You're killing me, woman. Hiya, drain the r She- The rice. She draining rice with colander. It, it struck a chord with me because it was just the, w the way she made rice was so bizarre. Like egg fried rice in, in Asian culture, it's a, it's a very simple dish to make, you know, it's, it's all like whatever's left in your fridge, you just use it, you know, like the leftover rice, leftover vegetables, leftover meat, whatever, just whack it in there. This is just so bizarre and so funny and I, yeah, I just made a reaction video. I was like, oh, shit, people like this, so let's, let's, let's make more and let's see where, where this character can go. You've spoken on your podcast before mm -hmm. about people accusing you of perpetuating negative stereotypes. Yeah, sometimes I, I do get feedback sometimes that Uncle Roger perpetuates negative stereotypes for Asian people and I see where they're coming from. I'm doing a character that it's very close to me and it went so big because everybody can relate to it. You know, people grew up in Asia, they know an Uncle Roger in their family. I view Uncle Roger as a celebration of Asian Asianness and Asian culture and Asian things in general because, you know, Uncle Roger if you look at the things I make, Uncle Roger never puts his own race down, right? He's always, he's very positive, uh, sometimes almost too uh, positive for comedy. But I'm, 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 when I make the character, it's, it's, he's always very positive about his own race, you know? He's very proud of it. And also in, in Western media, Asian culture, I, when I say Asian here, I mean more East Asian culture, you know, Chinese, Hong Kong, uh, th th that region, Taiwanese. Asian culture here is just not as visible in, in the UK, unfortunately. I think, you know, if you look at TV programs here, I can't even think of one big Asian presenter or just one big Asian guy you can look up to. You know, I think if I started making videos where Uncle Roger is saying things like, oh, I'm Asian, I love eating dog, you know, then then there's a, then that, that would be a problem, right? But to the people who accuse me of, uh, that, that character being a racist caricature, I would say, I would urge them to actually listen to the, the things I'm saying and see that everything I say is lifting our people up. I think the people who also think Uncle Roger shouldn't have an accent, they're essentially saying that Uncle Roger should sound white, which is very problem problematic in itself. Asians have accents, and sometimes we, we wanna do a character with an accent, and that character, like Uncle Roger without an accent, it just wouldn't be right. You've now got over 3 million subscribers on YouTube and that's pretty much happened just in the last year. Yeah, I know people who have made videos for years and you know, not at my level of subscribers and I don't take any of that for granted. I keep, I always wanna challenge myself, I keep making videos that are better. Uh, the growth was insane when the first Uncle Roger video came out with the BBC food egg fried rice one. It got written up in all the newspapers in every single Asian country. I was doing radio interviews. I was doing Zoom interviews with like the Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Korea, Thailand, everywhere. Uh, I appeared in Variety. Uh, yeah, my social media just exploded overnight. I yeah started started needing to build a team around me because I was just really stressed under all the workload and like fending off all the interview requests and. Uh, just, just everything, everything changed, you know, Every, it just blew up and but Uncle Roger went viral on all the platforms, you know, Reddit, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, uh, and then you guys picked it up, Lad Bible picked it up, Unilad, or Nine Gag, everywhere. So what does the future hold? Uh, the future, for me, I want to keep making videos because I'm still, I still really enjoy making them, I enjoy the editing process, even though during the every edit, there's a point where I'm like, oh, this video is gonna be so shit, Ugh, so bad. But then after when the edit's done, you realize, oh, it's it actually turned out pretty good. I, I'm also hoping to do some more ambitious things, you know, hopefully get some sort of scripted production in the works or have have bigger scale projects, you know, maybe a, maybe a sitcom, maybe a non-scripted travel show, that kind of thing. Who knows if that will happen or not, but regardless, there are things that are completely under my control and that's just, you know, keep making videos that I enjoy. And if you could say anything to Uncle Roger, 
Uh huh. I would say, uh, hey, keep doing what you're doing, and uh, don't let the haters get to you, Uncle. Now, can you stop annoying me? Hiya. Like the other day, I DM'd a rapper that I want to get on the show, and he literally replied in five minutes, was, and was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I was just like, oh, okay, this this is cool, this is good. Who else are you keen to book? Um, I'm keen to book Drake, so, Fingers crossed.